There's no doubt that influencer marketing is an increasing part of the marketing mix. A recent study by Taluna and Golin found one in five consumers enjoyed receiving product recommendations from social media influencers. Done well, it can bring thousands more people to a brand. In 2016, Mars engaged influencers when encouraging people to pick a new flavour of M&M's. Coffee Nut Flavour won after one million votes were counted, but Mars won 269 million PR and social media and influencer impressions, 216 influencer partner posts and 14.4 million social engagements. So why do influencers benefit brands? You need to have actors, third party individuals to evaluate, review, endorse your products. You can't do it all alone by advertising alone. And that's the reason why influencer marketing is important because if you collaborate with the right influencers who also are able to discover your products along with their followers, you can establish trust. Influence have developed a track record for finding new things. Their influence helps to build trust in a new brand. So is it worth it and can its success be measured in an uplift in sales? We have a client who um, is entering a new market like in China where they were literally unknown and they are able to now, by finding the right influence to, to drive the brand awareness but also the trust along with it, to have the majority of the revenue now coming from China. So I think influence and marketing needs to be recognized for what it's good for, changing brand perceptions for example, market entry, establishing trust for example, um, and, be, and be measured accordingly. So when you compare that alongside with other sort of brand tools, you know, whether it be magazines, whether it be billboard, outdoor, and so on and so forth, then when you, when you start thinking about it, the ROI kind of measurement is very different from, you know, how much pounds sold. So great for new and upcoming brands, but why are big brands getting into influencer marketing in such a big way too? Typically what we're seeing with a bigger brand, they are looking to uh, create what their brand stand for before the younger demographic in addition to the existing customers that they already have je suis quelqu'un d'authentique je me pense créatif and by doing so they can defend themselves against some of the pure digital play brands whose dna is on the smaller brand front almost 100% influencers so if it's not simply about increasing sales driven by Instagram pics, where's the value in a brand engaging with influencers? If what you mean by value, it's the ability of the influencer to achieve the goal that is set by the brand, then I think it very much depends on whether or not the goal is achieved or not. So to give you an example, we have um, a client whose objective is to change their brand perception from a budget high street fashion brand to a lifestyle brand. They find influencers who are very much in the lifestyle part, whom they could collaborate with either through organic collaboration, event invite, or campaign, so that by the end of this one year period, they are able to stop their discounting policy, hold their price, and increase their revenue by 12.5%. So in that case, what is, what is the value of the influencer? It's not how many pieces of content, it's not what is the sale driven, it's actually how the brand is perceived, especially to the younger generation of, cons of consumers that they have. So, you know, the, the value is worth millions because otherwise they would have to discount away. So success needs to be gauged by softer measurements than just sales. Then there's the issue of getting the right influencer. Time for some due diligence. Wherisma uses AI to sift through thousands of influencer posts to evaluate whether they're a good logical fit with a brand. A brand must look at two components within an influencer uh, collaboration. So one part is what are their track record? Is there anything potentially that may be inappropriate for you as a brand? Is there anything controversial? The other aspect of it is actors such as, you know, the the fake followers aspects, you know, the bots and so on, which also um, is important to look at whether there's any suspicious um, spike in the way that they grow in their following and engagement that is worth a discussion. Influencer marketing has had some bad press of late, but isn't this the same sort of press we've seen with other upcoming marketing techniques? It reminds me a lot on the early days of digital advertising where um, you know an area grow really quickly with lots of investment um, inevitably attracts new 
potential um, bad actors, right? You know, you have fake traffic, fake clicks, bot farms. The good thing about this is that influencer um, by nature is a person and can be held accountable, responsible. It's not an easy conversation, but it can be had um, in comparison to other channels in uh, digital advertising like programmatic and so to speak, you know, that is a, uh, a bit harder um, to, to entangle. So that's certainly an area that um, we are very, very much um, in the forefront to supporting our clients to look at. Hi, I'm James Wright and thanks for watching Marketing Media Money. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thanks for watching.